What's your third? So I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go to the '90s. Um, when I was a kid, um, had had to give a shout out to the '90s, man. You know, that's that's my era right there. Um, this came out when I was in going into the fifth grade. Um, this swept through. You know, this was this was a big hit. It crossed over. It was it's an R&B song, but it crossed over. Um, this young lady was about oh. 14, 15 years old when this song came out when she dropped it. Okay. Um, I'm going. I want to be down by Brandy. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've always been a big fan of this song. Uh, I love the remix as well with Queen Latifah, you know, MC Light and Yo-Yo. Um, I want to be down. Yeah, to me, this is one of those quintessential 90s R&B songs or just songs in general. Like if you're putting together um, a soundtrack of the 90s, you know, obviously you're going to put, no, uh, you know, Poison. You're going to put This Is How We Do It on there. Um, you know, Kiss, you know, Kiss from the Rose by Seal and all that stuff. But I feel like this song belongs on that record as well. Um you know it's keith crouch right yeah he wrote the song yeah yeah i um, thought so uh, produced it too i believe yeah, yeah. And he did a, he did a lot of stuff for a lot of um artists in the 90s you know yeah he, he was, did yeah he was he was in the background doing a lot of things um i got yeah. one of those coming too for slept on stay tuned kids oh keith crouch yeah there's another keith crouch thing coming but yeah i, I love i love the sniff uh on this song i love the um the mid it's mid temple um Brandy sings it beautifully. She's she's always been a great vocalist. Uh, yeah, she's, you know, I mean, anytime you can share the stage with like a Whitney Houston or you know Aretha Franklin, you know, people like that, you're you're you know you're really doing something. You know, when people like that think highly of you, you know, you know she was she shared the stage with Shaka Khan, Gladys Knight. You know, she's Brandy is, you know, she's a top tier vocalist. Uh, I'm not saying she's better than those ladies, but she's definitely a top tier vocalist. Uh, you know, I don't think she really gets enough credit for that. And um, she, she does now. She didn't then because her voice was thinner. That well, was yeah, a voice that, yeah. and we've talked about this before. That was a voice that had to get older. Yeah, yeah. But she and now that it is, yeah, she's great. She, yeah. She's referred to as the vocal bible because she is. Yeah, and you know, it, it's 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 a really good song. Um, it, it's it one of those songs that belongs in the soundtrack of my youth. Um. You know, and I feel like I had to put this song on there because every time this song, uh, every every time this song comes on, you know, iPod or radio, or whatever, I listen to it straight through. I never skip it. And thinking about that, that's when I knew, okay, I got to put this song. I got to put this song on my top five because I I never skip it. You know, and whenever you don't skip a song, you know, generally that means you really really hold the song in really high regard. And this is one of those songs for me. Uh, you know, it's. You know, the, the lyrics are pretty simple, you know, um, it was basically geared towards, you know, the youth, you know, the, between the ages of 11 and 18 or 11 and 21, but it your works. Age, your age bracket. Yeah. 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 It was aimed and, right at you, bro. Like, yeah. And it's, it's an R&B song through and through. Oh but yeah. It crossed over, but it crossed over and it, and it, it just became a big pop record. And well, because just, at that, at that point, pop radio was going to R&B. That they is were true. looking for R and B songs, so yeah, I that think. is true. Because less than a year later, Montel Jordan hit the scene with "This Is How We Do It." Um, you know, yeah, Candy Rain hit. You know, came out. You know, TLC was doing their thing around this time. Um, so yeah, that make that makes sense. You know, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I had to I had to put "I Want to Be Down" on here. Um, and even oh, yeah. the remix, the remix is basically you know Yo Yo MC Light and Queen Latifah you know rapping over this beat with Brandy doing the vocals in the background. And even that works. I love that version too. Like, yeah. Honestly, I can't. I, I don't know which version I like more, that version or the hip hop version. But um, yeah, great song and um, quintessential '90s listening. If you're gonna make a '90s soundtrack, this song definitely belongs on there. She had a few like that. That for, that entire first album because I it, it's it's funny because I just I didn't think of that song, but I love it every bit as much as you do for sure. I remember hearing yeah. that song and like, you know doing doing the run to tower records that i was known for doing back then just <laughs> immediately disappeared and got in the car and grabbed the cd like had to have it yeah and the whole thing is fire i mean my yeah. gosh she was positioned so well and yeah. she already had she she already had most of her chops i mean her voice was what it was at that point it was thinner because she yeah. was younger but yeah. she still sounded great there was no getting yeah. around oh, yeah. it and when she would she would perform live she was pitch perfect yeah. So she already had it. She just needed to get older and for the voice to deepen. And by the time yeah. she got to Departed, my gosh. Yeah. Like, this is what it was supposed to be. 
yeah. but at, but even at its beginnings all the potential was already there and she delivered the tune like she didn't just sing the surface of it she understood it and delivered it so well and keith crouch's production my gosh yeah. I mean, and, and i love that this this song runs over five minutes and i love that it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, I feel the it's same. Not, yeah, same here. Like I can listen. I listen to every bit of that song every time it comes on. Oh yeah, no I hate the dude. The radio edit is the devil. I hate it. Yeah. Oh, I hate it. I don't go anywhere near yeah. it. Yeah, this song that's... is. Let me see. Okay, maybe it's a shade under five minutes, but it's about four minutes fifty seconds. But I mean, still, like, yeah. and I don't. Re frankly, I don't remember radio over here cutting it either. I think you we've got what? the full know. version here in DC. Yeah, I know we did in L.A. because, you know, Brandy was, you know, she was out here in L.A. at that time, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, she's an L.A. girl, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, I, you know, I, I love the song, man. It's it's, it's great, you know, I like I said, oh, no yeah. skips anytime. I've never, I never skipped a song. Yeah, same, I don't either. Yeah, that's yeah. a, that's a, your list is just getting more and more fire. My gosh, yeah, I, I love that song. It's a great pick. You could yeah. you could pick so many things from her at that period though, but yeah, yeah. Because sitting, really sitting, sitting up in my room was a really good track too. Broken hearted. Come on, now. that was with Wanya, right? Wanya Morris yeah, did Wanya, that song together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with yeah, Wanya, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and in her second album had some had some cuts in there too that could have made, you know, any '90s list or whatever. You Angel know what in mean? disguise. So, Come on, bro. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, just who would have. Yeah. Rodney Jerkins is crazy for that. Like, just yeah. And you know, you know another song that I love from her. It's on their second mm -hmm. album, "Never Say Never," which was the title track. Love that as well. Feel you, feel you on that. There's yeah. a, there's so much good on that record. I mean, uh, 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 "Have You Ever" is really good. That's one. Of, yeah. That's that's one from the David Foster template, but it really works. Yeah. Uh, one voice is great. Tomorrow yeah. is great. Like, put that on everything. Like. Yeah, sitting on top of the world. Yeah, that that the record from beginning to end. She's like, yeah. that's I think that's her most solid like album front to back. Yeah, yeah, and it's unfortunate, like you said, when she got to Departed, her voice was was amazing. But by then, she wasn't really center stage like she was in the nineties. You know. Yeah, and it just she'd gotten older, and unfortunately, just the audience had moved on, which is unfortunate because yeah. that song was every bit as good as the stuff that had come before it. If it frankly oh, yeah. is not better, and the car yeah. accident didn't help either, and there was bad press associated with that. And um, what was what happened with the, with the car of, accident? I'm sorry, what happened with the car accident? Yeah, she got involved in a car accident that killed somebody. Oh, oh yeah, okay, I do remember that. And the and the press was not pretty, of course. So yeah, that, that was unfortunately that was that would that yeah that that had an effect on things too at that point because she was still kind yeah. of dealing with it. But man, she sounded good on that tune. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I want to be down is a great pick. It's I love that we're picking things that neither of us is thinking of. That's that's very yeah. funny. Um, but yeah, okay, so so here's my third. When you said 90s, I got nervous because this picture. Where did you, you think I was going? We are, we are similar enough that I feared you might go here. So okay. the year is 1991 for this. Okay. Um, and it's the second tune that they put out after Are You Free, which was a mistake, um, a big, big mistake. But thankfully, they were able to recover from it. Um, but they put out Pretty Brown Eyes. Um, and I was through. Do you hear me? Through. Um, Ooh, right? Um, I couldn't believe. It was another one where I couldn't. I heard it on the radio. Like, I didn't even. The song didn't even finish. I got to the sax solo, that incredible sax solo by Jeffrey Allen. Mm -hmm. And I turned, I was at home and I turned off PGC and got in the car. You know the rest. Um, sometimes you just got to do things. I, yeah. I love that era because that's what we had to do. We couldn't download it. You had to go buy it. Um, yeah. And it was, there, there was we, a we lot We talked of, about that too in another podcast, the thrill of having the search for a song, yeah. Yeah, that was there was a lot of fun in that, but I remember doing that a lot at that point. Yeah, and all I had to do was get to that sax solo, 
and I was done. I had to have the whole oh, album. Man. And I was yeah. rewarded. The whole thing's that good. Yeah. Um, but Pretty Brown Eyes just absolutely blew my head off. And it was finally, because up at, up until that point, we had, I, I forget, did Joe Public, I think Joe Public came right right around the same time with Living They were Room. a little bit afterwards. They were a little bit afterwards. A little after? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I couldn't remember. Joe I, Public. <laughs> well, wait a minute. No, because they did uh, Keep It Coming, which was on Keith Sweat's record. So I think that was at the same time. Okay, yeah, that was 91. That was Keith's third album, correct? Yeah, because they that did his, that first. Yeah. Okay. And then they and then he got them. Live and Learn. Yeah, they got Live and Learn and okay. a couple of other things we don't really need to talk about because Live and Learn was about all they had in the in the chamber. Yeah. But they, they couldn't carry that any further than that one tune. And even that one song is pushing it. But it, the groove is so hard that it's, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I like I it. Said that? yeah, <laughs> but it, it it was so well produced. Thank you, Lionel Job. I we appreciate you. We, yeah. give, we I hereby give you your flowers for that one. Yeah, um, they barely had enough lyric to get through that one, but uh, but yeah, um, right, other band, mint condition. Thank you. But the two of the, the those two bands kind of opened up the idea that you could actually have an R&B band because up until that point, there really weren't any. Well, wasn't Tony Sony Sony? They were doing something similar, weren't they? At least not. No, but I'm saying like, even then it was like, those were the three. I, I didn't mean to leave them out, but it's like, those yeah. were the three, kind of the big three at that point. Yeah. And definitely Tony, Tony, Tony was first. Yeah. With, with Little Walter and then with the re whole revival album and, and so on. Yeah, and, so and, and Ralph and Stokely, man, Raphael and Stokely, they, they go hand in hand. They do. They really do. Yeah. Like they could have swapped groups and they wouldn't have missed a beat. Yeah, but I, th I think the major difference between Tony, Tony, Tony and 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 Men Condition is that we're dealing with a whole band here. And a yeah. lot of those guys can switch instruments too. Yeah. Because uh, they weren't all like Jeffrey's a great piano player too, on top yeah. of being a great sax player. Stokely can play guitar and he can play drums and he can sing his face off. Yeah. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. The only reason they have a drummer, Chris Dave, who's fantastic, by the way, is because they want a front man. They want Stokely out front to sing. But in the studio, yeah. he'll play anything. He doesn't care. Oh yeah. Just to just to doing his thing to his day too. Yes. Still doing his thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Still sing, still singing the songs in the same key. Yeah, she right amazing track. Yes, yes, and the writing by by Waddell and just yeah, what an incredible tune. And Jeffrey wrote it with him too. Just mm -hmm. a great song, and it's it's basically the soundtrack to my senior year in high school. Um, yeah, I deeply, deeply, deeply love that song, and there's no way that I wasn't going to include that song just because of what it represents for me. And um, you, you how know amazing! Funny? It is. So when you said "Mint Condition," I I thought you would have picked the other song, um, "Forever in Your Eyes." I thought you might have went there. Hard not to. Yeah, because you right, know what's funny? I'm, I have to. I think I kind of like that song a little bit more than Pretty Brown Eyes. It's it's close. It's very close. Um, obviously it wasn't as big. <laughs> I dare you. No, 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 this is no hate to what you pick because you know Pretty Brown Eyes. You know that's that's an amazing song. But yeah, I I I, I honestly thought you would you were probably gonna go there. But regardless, though, you know Pretty Brown Eyes is an amazing track. You know. Um, you know, ninety one was a really, really good year for R and B. That was really, the year really when year. that was the year when pop radio started seeking out R and B radio. Yeah, and that that particular year holds is 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 holds a place in my heart because that was Boyz II Men's debut, Jodeci's debut, Mick Condition's yes. debut. Um, who else came out? I think I don't know who else was. Um, yeah, Color Me Brown. I mean, yeah, Color Me Bad. I'm sorry, Color Me Brown. And, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but oh uh, yeah, color color me bad. Uh, I think the color hit, me hit brown, the ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I, I think low key came out that same year. I got a thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, low key. Yeah, so that was that was a really really good year for R and B. Um, it was. Yeah, yeah. I always yeah when I when I talk when I think about the nineties, ninety one is like the first year I think about because there was just so much going on, um, that year with you know with the groups and. You know me, I'm a big fan of the R&B groups and I wish that was something that would come back. Unfortunately, it's probably not, but yeah, so. 
Yeah, that ninety one was like the year for so yeah. many different things, and I, I remember quite clearly like why is why is tony terry playing on pop radio right now like what oh yeah when i'm with you yeah right uh why is gerald levert on pop radio right now yeah why is mint condition on pop radio right now like pgc this will make no well pgc was like the the urban contemporary station here it's like mm -hmm. pop radio sounded like pgc for a minute it was okay. really cool it's like yeah finally like you're you're getting the secret that that like we're holding over here like you're finally hearing it yeah and it was just it was it was so amazing and like forever my lady by jodeci is on pop radio what yeah because huh? jodeci is not pop jodeci is not no, pop whatsoever. not at all not they're they make whatsoever. zero concessions to pop radio never did they didn't do that until they broke off when the two brothers broke off you know, in the late nineties and did their thing that they tried to actively go into that market, but and that worked as well too. But I don't even know that yeah, they no, tried that hard even then. I mean, I guess we could argue about all my life. All my life is definitely a that's definitely a crossover record. When I when I listen to that song, I mean it's an R and B song, but it feels like they were trying to right. go in that direction though. But like the way but, you know, the way that the way JoJo sings it, like he don't sing it like a pop star like yeah he's not yeah but when you listen to like the melody and everything like that it, it feels radio yeah, friendly if it's pop it friendly, is you know? very major like it's not it's, it's not Devante. you know what i mean no definitely not yeah yeah definitely yeah. not and maybe that's maybe that's where i'm going with it like Devante was not he was a hip-hop r&b guy he was definitely not a pop guy so oh yeah he didn't even they didn't even remotely try with that record and i'll i'll be sure co-produced forever my lady and yet yeah. here it is on pop radio and no one, none of us could make sense of it. It was like, what? Yeah. It, it, it made sense with Boyz to Men because it seemed like they were going in that, they were trying to go in that direction. Little Motown. To, yeah. Yeah. So. They want, yeah, Motown, I mean, Motown has historically wanted both. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they've historically gotten away with it. And with Boyz to Men, they certainly did.